So today we're going to walk you through the basics of making line charts in Google Sheets, along with some quick walkthroughs, tips and tricks on making your charts really pop and look professional. So let's just jump right in here. So let's select some data that we want to use to make our line chart. And then we can create the line chart either by insert chart over here on the toolbar or under the insert menu, we can go to chart. And so Google will default to a chart type and it kind of picks based on what it thinks you might want um, based on how it looks at the data. And so in this case, it came up with a line chart, but if it didn't, maybe it had a column chart like this or a bar chart or some other chart type, you can just go here to the setup and change that to the one that you want. Now, if this chart editor sidebar isn't open, like for example on here, just double click on that chart and then it will show up. And so you notice there is two tabs here. There's setup and customize. And so customize has mostly to do with how it displays and the setup has to do with the back end as far as what chart type you want, where the data is coming from, setting your X axis and any series. If you wanna aggregate the data, for example, um, on the X axis, and then things like switching rows and columns and so forth. So we have this all good to go here. We have the correct data range. If you need to modify that, you can either manually type it in here, or you can go back and select the data range or concatenate if you add another one and so forth. So let's go ahead and jump into the customize and see how we can make this look really sharp. And so first of all, let's just start from the top on chart style. And so you can pick uh, a font here if you like. And then a way that really makes it look different quickly is changing the background color and the border color. And so it's up to you if you want the border color to kind of fade in the background, just pick the same color for both. And that could be any color that you like. If you like blue, for example, you can change it to blue. Or you can even add a custom one here and enter your hex number there or the RGB values there. So for now, let's just pick a light gray. And then we have some other options here that you can use if you like. So smooth has to do with smoothing out the edges. And this one is pretty straight and flat as it is. So you're not going to see a bunch of variation. But in something that has a lot of variation, that would smooth out the hard edges. And then maximize just makes it fill up that whole chart space. So occasionally that looks good. In this case, it doesn't really look that great, um, but you can play around with that as you will. Then you can also plot null values, which is empty values or leave them blank and so forth. So let's go ahead and collapse the chart style for now. So we can set our titles here. So chart title, subtitle, and then our axis titles. So in this case, we go to horizontal, you can see it's date. So sometimes these are very helpful and needed. Other times it's really extraneous data because it's a very apparent what it is. And so there's like that. So if we look at this real quick, let's we're actually going to go back to the setup. So one thing you'll note is this isn't displaying all the data. So because it's a date, Google's determining it's just going to display some of this instead of all of it. And so one thing to note is if that is occurring and you do not want that to happen, you'll want to come down here where it says use column B as labels and change this to treat labels as text. And then I'll make it show up for each one. And so sometimes you might want to aggregate and kind of only display based on a couple of the relative dates there. For example, if you have a year or more, you may not want every day to show up. And so in that case, you may want to do that. But if you want everyone to show up, then go ahead and do treat labels as text. And so let's go back to here real quick. So we can change our chart title if we like. And so we could say Google stock price. We can change our font here if we like. And then if you want any other kind of format there, you can change the color if you like and the font size something like that. You can even change this to centered or left or right here. And then, so let's just do it centered for now. And so you can see it's already looking sharper. Maybe you want this to get deleted. So you can just actually just click on it and hit delete or backspace. And it'll delete it. You don't have to go into this to do that. And so let's go ahead and close this out. So series, we can see here is close. We have more than one as we'll show in a minute. 
then you can pick all series or pick one in particular. And then here we can just set different settings like what color we want the line to be. If you want the line to be transparent, and so you can set a transparency or opacity. And then you can set if you want a particular kind of line type dashed or solid or whatever it is. And then you can also set the thickness and then point size if you like. And we have to get a little bigger and that is displaying each data point. And then another common thing that people like is adding some data labels. And so this one we might have to do below just like that. And now we can see the value for each of those. And so let's go back up to points just for a minute before we move on. There's also a different number of point shapes you can do. And so just keep that in mind. Different ones may be appropriate or in line with your aesthetics like that. Another thing you can do as well is you can shift where you want the reference um, axis to show up on the right or left. And then you can also change these formats here where these are dollars and cents. And so normally it picks from the source data, but you can also do it manually here if you want, for example, to round them or so forth. And if you want to reset, you can go back to from source data. So let's go ahead and close up this series for now and go to legend. And so this one doesn't need a legend. And so we'll go into that more here in a moment with the multi series chart in a second. And so finally, we got horizontal, vertical axis, and grid lines. And so horizontal axis, you can change the labels here, for example, um, if you want them to be slanted or so forth. You can also change the font size and the style if you want a different look there. And obviously, then these as well. You can also change the color if you want to set that manually to something different. And then one more thing here that is important to note is you can also reverse the order. And so this does it in reverse order. And so sometimes that is actually very helpful to do. And so vertical axis. And so this one, we can actually set some things here. So if you notice, this starts at zero and goes up. We know something's always going to be at a certain value. We can actually set a minimum here. And so here you can see it goes up to 100. We can actually go a little closer if we want. We could do, let's say, 130. And now we can actually see a little more variation as we've gotten a lot closer to that value. You can go to 135 and really hone in on that. And so we can also do a scale if you like. And then here we can also display what you want this reference to be if you want those. If you want the sense on there or not. And in this case, since it's only displaying whole values, it might be just appropriate to do the currency rounded so you don't have extra digits that are messing up your display. So that looks pretty good there. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. And this one has multiple series that we're going to plot. And then we also have a total. So let's go ahead and select our data. And so I'm going to select the whole thing. I'm going to show you what's going to happen here when we do this. So I'm selecting, including the year total and the totals there. Let's go ahead and insert the chart. And so it didn't really pick a good one here. It's including the total peaches, bananas, pears, and apples. So one thing is that our total is currently messing us up. And so if we actually get rid of that series there, this may be something you like to see. And this is basically a stacked column chart and it's showing, giving a very visual of where the sales broke down. So you can see bananas was usually a big chunk and so forth. But what we're looking at today is a line chart. So let's go ahead and just change that to a line chart here. And now you can kind of see what we're working with. Let's go ahead and resize this a little bit and maybe make this a little wider. So one thing you'll note is Google did strip off the year total. So sometimes it will just automatically do stuff like that for you. So if you really needed it, you'd have to add it back in then. 
and obviously that's not what you would probably want but just in case google misreads what you're trying to do and throws it off for you you will have to go into the setup and fix that in that data range and then here again so before we just had the one series and so we didn't have this option but here we have all these series and so you can actually remove all series for example and you can pick and so this would be one one reason you might want to do this is if you want them to be a certain order so by default google will add them in order that they show up but maybe you want to do peaches and then pears or something like that but let's go ahead and remove all and let's just do them in order like this and then they show up like that so one thing as you can see here does not have treat as text because it is by default text here so it's not having that option so we can go ahead and delete that series label there or that horizontal axis label and then let's jump into our customized settings let's set our background and border color real quick and then here we can see if we do that smooth it turns those into smoother lines instead of having those angles there and so again we may want to just run down through and change these titles here so you can do this from here or you can actually just double click on pretty much any element in the chart and then just edit it from there. And so here we could just say uh, sales by fruit or something like that. And then over here now we can see, we can set those settings about colors and fonts and so forth. All right, so there we go. We've got that basic setting here. And so now we can go to series. And if we look, we have an option to apply to all series since that allows you to pick all the options at the same time. Or you can pick one at a time and manually change it. So if you want to change those colors, for example, and so forth. Now, if we go to all series, we could just pick if we want to apply something to all of them like that. Or if we go back to apples, for example, we can make the apples one very thick and not the others. And so that's the difference between doing the apply to all or individually picking one is if you want something to apply to only one series or if you want to apply to all. And so apply to all, we can look at maybe adding some data labels there. And so one thing to note is, so for example, these, not all of them are showing up. And what's happening is they're actually getting cut off at the top because this is currently displaying them above the line. And so if we look here at position, auto, Google's just trying to automatically determine. We may have to adjust that to more accurately fit that. And so there you can see now they're on the line, which is kind of working. We may have to set that text color to something to make them a little more visible. Another thing that may help is adding some points. So if we go something a little bigger, maybe set them in the square or something. And that kind of helps a little bit. So sometimes you just have to kind of play around with these things until you get the look that you want. And sometimes you're just going to have a little bit of. Um, overlay there and so one thing we could do is go to font size and go a little smaller maybe um, and it has down to 10 here but you can manually put in a number as well if you want to go a little smaller and so sometimes with the charts you should have to make a decision on what's most valuable to you because sometimes you may miss a little clarity in things that are right next to each other and so you decide if it just work makes more sense to not have the data labels or if they work better that way and then the legend here so currently the legend is at the top so if we select top it's still gonna be there we could change that to the bottom left right we could do inside and it's kind of inside the chart and so sometimes that that works well otherwise um, it doesn't always so you also throw it off to the left or the right so we're going to put the bottom now i think i think that looks clean and nice and then if we jump back in here we could modify any settings we want to for the horizontal or vertical axis and to wind it up let's just look at grid lines and ticks and so we have two options vertical and horizontal and so here let's just look at what happens there some major ticks and you can see we have different options there as well we go to vertical you can see we have a few more options here we can add major and minor you can change the color of them 
you can also add ticks. So ticks are just on that series or axis line, and the grid lines are actually showing up inside. So just a quick reference point on how that goes. And you can see if we did 10 there, it would show up like that. If we did one, it just shows up one between and so forth. So you can do a custom on those grid lines if you like. And the same thing with the major grid lines, you can also determine how many that you want. And so Google often automatically, and sometimes the auto works well, sometimes it doesn't. And so you can determine based on that. So one last thing we probably want to up our minimum on this, maybe go to 80. And then that actually helps solve one of our problems of the of that overlap. Maybe we could jump up to 90, get a little closer. Or even 95. And now you can see we get a little more separation there. All right, so that is it for today's video. Let's just finish that up there. So you can make a copy of this Google Sheet from a link in the description below. Otherwise, make sure to check out our other tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.